Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and um, I noticed that you are quite interested in updates on the NS Panel Pro and you know what new features the new upgrades bring or new firmware upgrades bring and my in my last video I reviewed the version 1.3.0 and since then I think we have gone all the way to 1.4.1 but I haven't made a video about that because mostly some of the new features were added are not working perfectly and uh, of course something has been fixed but then other thing has broke as well so i don't think that this is a you know a notable addition to the ns panel pro which to which i think it's it's worth to upgrade but uh, it looks like that there has been a stop um, uh, i mean there was a you know fairly regular cadence to some software updates but the last one was probably about three weeks ago and haven't seen anything uh, there so i think what i'm going to do now is i'm going to talk through some of the changes and also mention why i think it doesn't worth to upgrade or didn't worth a video in the past because they are not working perfectly maybe one um good note is i want to add is i had issues with the camera feeds and that has been fixed so um, maybe you remember that back in the back in the days and uh, originally i was able to add my ip camera feed uh, which is not a son of camera so this is just a regular uh, in fact it's a real link ip camera and uh, what was happening in the past then the first frame just froze and i wasn't getting a live feed well Nothing is moving in the outside, but it is definitely working. So this is something that got fixed in one of the recent releases. And just one more comment that I should have probably added in the beginning is that in quite a few of the upgrades, uh, the, there, there is an upgrade to the uh, Zigbee stack, which means that uh, when that happens, then you need to reconfigure all your Zigbee devices. So that is one more reason why you think, why you should be careful with the upgrade, especially if you have a sizable Zigbee network, because then you need to re-register re your devices. And it looks like that once you re-register them, they work, but still it's, um, um, yeah, it could be annoying. So the first thing is, well, I mentioned that the IP camera is working. Um, and I think I also mentioned any, uh, these new features about the temperature sensors. So that was added in the latest release as well. I haven't noticed any new devices that are supported. So there is no difference in that. Probably the biggest change is actually the addition of a fourth screen, which is a power consumption screen that you can see here. And uh, that works with devices such as the PO or the POW, sorry, the POW release one or two. For some reason, it doesn't work with the POW Elite at the, or at least at the moment. And uh, this just gives you like a seven day history of uh, the consumption on that device. Mine is connected to the washing machine. So this is why I think we have used the washing machine in the last three days. So it shows the consumption in a simple bar graph and you can click on it and you can see the daily consumption. My only issue with that, that it always defaults to Sunday and Saturday, but today is Wednesday. So basically in the beginning of the week, you see like on Monday, you see Sunday and then the rest of these are just empty because these are essentially times in the future. So it doesn't make sense. This, um, you know, the X axis just should roll with the current day. So it, would all, it should all sh always show you the current day here and then the last seven days, but it doesn't work like that. I mean... I told them and they said that they are working on it. So it is like sort of like a half usable solution. And the funny thing is that the same functionality has been added to the, uh, to the cast screen and in the cast screen it is working fine. So yeah, I mean, okay, that's something that this is coming and probably in the next few upgrade is going to be more usable than in the state that it is now. So that is a new thing which is added, but it is broken. The other thing which is added and is also broken is the change of the background screen. So I'm going to show you a little bit later that now it is possible to change this screen, but I get an error message every time I try it. Uh, it says that I should be connected to the same Wi-Fi network, but I'm connected to the same Wi-Fi network and still it doesn't work. So, you know, I mean, at the moment you can choose a couple of themes here and uh, so you should be able to add your own, which is not possible at the moment. And going back to the screen personalization that I mentioned, so here under personalization and 
the sc screen setting function did not change. You can turn off uh, some of the screens that you don't need. So you have the home screen and your device screen, that's, uh, that those are fixed. But if you are not using the scenes or the thermostat or the device consumption, you can turn them off. So they don't appear as like a swipe option because you know if you keep swiping to the left or right you can circle the screens so if you're not using one of the screens you can turn it off so it makes the um, you know the screen navigation a little bit faster and this is the image upload functionality so it already says that it only supports uh, images up to uh, you know um, 480 by 480 and actually I have resized one of my images to 480 and 480 but still I get this message and everything I try, I always get this message. So uh, I don't think the issue is with my network is something is broken, which they haven't been able to fix. And the other thing which I think it's a little bit broken is the proximity sensor. So I have this device sitting in my, uh, uh, in my office, in the desk. And then previously, whenever I was working in the office, this, uh, and I was sitting in front of the desk, this was always on but now it switches off. So it looks like that they have changed the sensitivity of the proximity sensor or it's just not working for whatever reason because it goes to sleep, the, uh, the screen disappears and I don't, and I just need to actually touch it to come back online. So it doesn't seem uh, like that it is responding to, you know, the proximity sensor and within the display settings, you can't, you know, change sensitivity or anything like that. So you just have the brightness and the auto lock functionality. You don't have anything else here, which uh, is going to use the, uh, that sensor. So this is not, there is not an, another setting in the, well, within settings to influence that behavior. And the last thing is, uh, well, actually probably could be the most important thing is uh, they have added a voice call functionality to the NS panel. And the idea is that, sorry, NS panel pro. And the idea is that if you have multiple NS panels, let's say you have uh, one in each room or a couple of places in your house, you should be able to call one NS panel pro from the other. So that is not working yet. The only thing you can do is you can call it from your phone. So there is this new option here, which is the voice call, and then you can do a voice call. And you just have to wait until it connects. It takes a little bit of time and then you can accept the call here and then the call starts and i um, i think my microphone is not going to pick this up but yeah there is um, a certain delay a certain lag uh, actually let me just unclip my microphone so there is a certain delay in the audio transmission but that's fine uh, that's not really an issue Probably the only issue I would mention that the NS Panel Pro is already on full volume and it is not really loud. So it's, uh, I mean, you really have to, you know, be in front of it in order to understand what is, uh, what the other person is saying. And you have to keep your phone to your ears just to also hear what uh, the other person is talking into the NS Panel Pro. But it is definitely working, but uh, I think it could be a little bit more usable if that works between NS Panel Pros, which is definitely the, the plan as, I, as far as I understood. But uh, again, this is a nice feature. It's a you know, nice addition. I don't know how much it will get used. It feels like um, you know, the, the dual call in, uh, in the Google Home devices where you can call your Google Home device from your phone or well, the similar is available for Alexa as well. But other than that, as you can see here, you can set the devices and then you can set the scenes and obviously Zigbee Gateway, the thermostat and the energy is the new function that you can add here. And now since I last checked, the POW Elite is available. So uh, out of all the devices I have, it looks like POW, the original, the release two, the Duo, which also does power uh, uh, consumption measurement and now power POW Elite is also available for this functionality. So I previously said it's not, but maybe this is something that they have added since I last checked. So obviously it is uh, getting changed uh, quite frequently. So I think that would be the, you know, the summary of the NS Panel Pro at the moment. As soon as there is a version where there are improvements to the existing functionality, and I think they are worth to be used, I would definitely post a new video. But until that, I'm probably just going to keep quiet. And if you want to experiment yourself, just you know, make sure that you check the options here from time to time. So within this, if you come to this screen and you have a, a red dot here on the settings, that means that you have a version update. 
uh, or a new firmware version available. And uh, in here, within the, in the software update, there would be a, like a button to say that there is a new version available and whether you want to upgrade or not. But uh, I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.